I guess it's time to go live, huh? All right. Yeah, man, this camera's a lot clearer, isn't it, than my last phone? And boy, they probably cut too much of hair off of me. I don't know how to deal with it. Anyway, no big deal. Cheers for you. Going to make a special recipe today. Going to talk about some other things, maybe. We'll see. First things first, I got to get my kids some dinner, man. Um, I put up the short yesterday about making uh, Beyond Meat steak tacos. Um, just because I had to rush their dinner. So I just showed sort of the end result. I got over a thousand views. It was quite crazy. Um, I have a suspicion to say it might have been India or something. Because when I woke up in the morning, I had all these Indian channels recommended to me. I spent more time today being like, don't recommend this channel, don't recommend this channel, than I've ever done in my life. Anyways, let me go wash my hands and get to it. So the main sort of uh, teaching part of the day is I'm going to make a casserole that you could call it a bean dip, I guess. Anyways, it tends to be very successful, and I'll let you know why. But uh, one of the things I have to do for that, hello, hello, gal pal, you're so early. <laughs> That's great. Um, one of the things I have to do to make the casserole that I'm doing is uh, get some shredded cheese. Now, I really apologize because I got white cheddar. That's not the right color. And it's aesthetic reasons, it'd be nice if it was yellow, like a cheddar or something. Flavor reasons, Colby. Real Colby is always the answer. But I got white cheddar. I only got one cheese, so we're going to do it that way. What's up, Dougie Doug? Nice to see you. Man, you guys are quick, huh? Nobody's streaming. Nobody was streaming yesterday either, right? Crazy world. All right, well... First things first, I got to get those kids dinner, but I think I'll go ahead and shred some cheese first. I need that for the actual recipe. It's coming. Hello. I think I hit the cheese for myself. Give me a minute. Okay, I found the wrong cheese. Uh, it's the wrong color. Like I said, you, you could use a cheddar for this recipe. I prefer Colby for sure. Real Colby is a wonderful thing. Colby Longhorn, you know that? Mmm, my goodness. But I only got one cheese this time. Yeah, cheese head, that's because, you know, my son that doesn't favor meat so much, that's his protein deal. That's what he says. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. I've always loved cheese. In the background, I got a tape playing, 976 Evil. Um, I recently saw this, well, not recently, in the past few years, I saw this movie um, screened at a, at a horror convention, and I realized, man, you know, the time period is gone, so it doesn't really make that much sense anymore. There was this whole, like, anti-evangelical, anti-censorship sort of thing with the TV fight. You know, this is directed, I believe, by... Uh, by Willie, um, <laughs> what's his name? Uh, uh, Freddy Krueger. You don't like soft or crumbly cheese, let's see. You don't like feta. Is that one of those that you don't like? Hmm. Uh, I had a doctor tell me that white cheeses are good, so I don't know. I mean, this is gonna have cream cheese. Maybe you're not gonna be a fan in that respect. Aesthetically, like I said, I would rather this be a yellow colored cheese, but it's not. Cheddar is good. Yeah, yeah. And really, for this dish, it's just more the looks. I mean, I have cheddar. This is white cheddar. It's like New York Sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, real, it's really worth it. 
I love brie. I mean, come on. I'm so sorry. I'm terrible. If you give me brie, I want to add butter. I want to add nuts. Sometimes I want to add like cranberry. I mean, brie is so damn good for me. You know, I understand like the mold casing is kind of funky, but man, a little bit almond slivers and butter on brie. I mean, that's so extravagant, but I fucking love it. Sorry, guys. The kids' actual joy choice for dinner today is uh, it's a pick two from the Dollar Tree. Pick two each. Because they don't want my food every day. They really don't. So sometimes even this like sort of prison commissary garbage from the Dollar Tree they like. Because it's a diversion. I get it. I like frozen burritos occasionally because I like real burritos in real life. So having the frozen one is like a benefit to me, weirdly enough. Anyways, so they did a pick two Dollar Tree. We always bring our own bags. We'll see what kind of goodies are in here for them. And then we'll move on to recipe and otherwise. As I said though, primary thing is making them dinner. I'm going to shred some cheese right now. I don't believe in buying the pre-shredded stuff. It has cellulose to keep it from sticking. And I feel like you can never taste it. I feel like it covers your tongue. It kind of blocks you from tasting it. It, it really sucks. Anyways, we still got some of this in, uh, Beyond Meat steak tacos for them too. I think one each, they'll be a little bit thin. Um, that short I put up last night, it had over a thousand views. It seemed they were all from India. And man, oh yeah, mozzarella. Yeah, of course, the monster, that's good shit. I like that because it holds up. Your favorites are white sharp cheddar, which I have, baby Swiss, which I would love on a Reuben, maybe. Uh, what else you got? Longhorn, Longhorn Colby is my number one for most hot applications. Mozzarella, I like even on a cheesesteak because it has so much bite to it, you know, even when it melts, it's still firm. And as far as pre-sliced cheeses or pre-shredded, I don't like those commercially, but Bellagio or the, hold on, I, I think I got it here. The Italian company, um, they make a provolone, maybe it's provolone, parmesan, provolone, and, and something else mixed, maybe mozz. Anyway, uh, moots, as you should say. Um, I'll give you the company name in a second. But anyways, that one is so good. Real mozzarella balls. Yeah, mozzarella balls. Where my wife works, uh, they make arancini. Um, it's very Mediterranean, but it's like rice balls with cheese inside. I believe you would like that, gal pal. I really do. Yeah, you got to buy the blocks. That's what I'm saying, you know. This one, you know, it's from BJ's. It's a cheap company. You can see, like the fill holes like they smashed it together you know what i mean you got a tool for shredding cheese i'll just use this guy i need the big shreds that's my tool port wine yes port wine and crackers uh my kids had cheese and crackers on saturday and they started to eat them and i was like what are you guys a bunch of savages like put the mustard on them <laughs> they put some like horseradish mustard and they were like, you're right. And I was like, don't you have any self-respect? It's like, I don't know. It's like drinking that twisted tea shit or whatever. Like, whew, have some respect for yourself. You have the same shredder? Yeah, this is the, I love it. If I'm making nachos, I'll use the big shred. And then I'll throw the big slices on top. Because I like them to just stand up. Power. All right. We can clean carousel. Nah, it's, it's foggy. Let me let me get that. It's just soap residue. I 
I guess these are the 9 by 11s I don't know. I know what 9 looks like. I don't really know 11. But yeah, I'm going to use that casserole dish. I'm going to shred the cheese into it first. Just because I'm using it later for the deal. And I'll shred the cheese so that it doesn't fly around. And then I'll put that shit in a bag. One moment. Anyway, understand that I, was, I, I, I want you to make this an orange cheese, this step. Just for aesthetics. By the way, even though that threw me off for a second, it's much better that it's soap residue than, I don't know, bean residue. So I'm going to go uh, light on the cheese here. Port wine. You got me again. I love that stuff. So I would hope that you put, I don't know, maybe even double this amount. But I'm going light on the cheese. There's no, there's no reason. You'll see why. It's going to be cheesy anyway. All right. I'm going to have to preheat the oven for some of this crap. I cook everything at 410, but we have extra high output over here, so sometimes it triggers our fire alarm, but totally falsely. Don't worry about it. Even our neighbors get used to it because it happens to them. We smell some good sausage and pasta in the air, and then all of a sudden we hear, ah, 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 ah. it's just them cooking, dude. No emergency. All right, don't mind me just tossing boxes because this is something we do later. You took the batteries out. This is a cheeseburger from, oh. Let me show you the actual branding. Cheeseburger from Dollar Tree. My son who doesn't like meat doesn't care if it's really cheap. So he eats hot dogs and cheap ass burgers. I put a hole in it like a disgusting man with my tooth. And I'll fuck with the microwave, my not friend. The bun is on that burger, so I'm putting it power level 7, 44 seconds. I'm going to take the bun off and, like, cook the burger up by itself a little bit. Guy from Scotland. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Like, that's one of those, like screwed in ones yeah yeah um i watch a lot of stuff online and like i call that the mark of poverty if you're in a place and it goes deep 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 you usually know you're in a low rent place like if you ever watch that like any sort of eviction show you'll see a lot of it we've been there i mean we got high bills here so our poverty is different. It's like, we got it, we got it, we spent it. Empty hands, end of the month. Yeah, it'll go on for months. My friend's got a special one where his router is yelling at him. And I'm like, dude, fix that shit. You know, I'm on the phone with him and he's like, oh, I just get used to it. You get used to it. That's right. Same thing. But be some more proactive, please. Sorry for the caps. Are you yelling at us? We got used to it. Don't worry about the caps. Mm. 
70 percent 44 was not enough to get the bun off that burger so i don't know i lowered the power level and we'll do another 44. i hate microwaves but you can't really go wrong with like 30 or so seconds at a time you're not gonna burn anything really oh <sighs> so with the rest of these tacos i guess some of that shredded cheese i'll throw in there for them They are not the prettiest thing. They're made with Beyond Meat steak chunks. But I'll throw some shreddy in there and these kids will be cool. Burn the cheese. No, burning the cheese is okay. Sometimes you want to bubble the cheese, you know? I can't really throw the boiler broiler on here. But uh, burning the cheese can be okay. Alright, let's make these kids a couple of tacos too. So yeah, if I can get this in frame a little bit. I love hard shell tacos, but these aren't for me. So, yeah, there it is. These are soft shells. Yeah, I love hard shell. That's my way. Um, but sometimes you got to be flexible. I mean, these are like what you would consider basically... What's the word for it? A carne asada. But they're not even real meat, you know. So, they'll, they'll like this. Soft is good for them because it doesn't break. They get mad about shit falling around. By the way, what we do for the kids when we make hard shell tacos is what we call taco boats. We break them in half and then we top them. Okay? So they don't have to deal with, like, biting in and losing the toppings. So we call them taco boats. One day, maybe we'll have a place called Taco Boat Taco. Why not? You know, uh, three for five. That's one and a half shells. But, you know, if you're doing flats, you got extra meat, you got extra filling. Good deal. So, this is that funky meat, if you can see it here. Now I'm just re-evening so everybody gets an even share. These are leftovers from yesterday. They had tacos yesterday. I might, I might even have to shred more cheese now that I made these tacos, but we'll find out. I was trying to be economical. We'll find out. No big deal. As long as they're happy, and man, they, did they love these. I'm not making these again. They're too chewy for me. But the flavor's good. See those little meats? No, you can't. No. Damn it. I'm taking a sample. Not bad. Hmm. Got some on the phone. Not bad. You make both? That's cool. One of my tricks would be like, kind of like Taco Bell Double Decker. I'll take a soft. I'm gonna throw like at least corn chips or something in there for the crunch. Cause I love the crunch. I like tacos dorados. The crispy. Mm. See, like I said, I gotta chew a lot. It tastes good though. Let's check on this burger. Now it's soft enough for me to take the bun off and cook the meat. You got to make soft and hard with all the people in this world, you know? Everybody's got their own demands. So here we go, my son's cheap ass hamburger.
So now I put just the patty in the microwave for that burger. Um, very low, like 40% power. We'll see how it goes. You got to make soft and hard. You got to please everybody, right? You got to make some with no tomatoes. Some people don't like tomatoes. I get it. Yeah, I'm going to have to shred more cheddar for that. Just because we threw some in these tacos. Now I'm going to give that burger patty 10 seconds on high so it starts to steam. Uh, I don't think I have any black pepper. Hmm. I'll give him some uh, chili powder. Totally understandable. Um, you know how people eat those country tomato sandwiches and stuff? As long as you get that cracked black pepper on there, I can do it. You know, if it's a good outdoor beef steak, they make you gag. Oh, totally. Totally understand. Um, now, when I make salsa, I make it fresh, usually. I don't like to cook it, so I'm good with tomatoes that way. Um, tomato, like, juice, I probably love. You can't eat grape skins. What, you have to peel them? Hmm. Grape skins have a very paper, dirt sort of flavor, so I totally get that. I totally get that, but I eat them. I prefer green, though. Oh, I love salsa, but a lot of people cook salsa, and I make salsa roja that I will cook down, but that's usually when people give me tomatoes that I hate, ones that are too small, like the Santa Sweets or the grape tomatoes. They're too damn sweet, so I'll cook that up. I'll throw in enough spice to make it hot, and then I'll throw in citrus, like orange juice or something, and then I get a good salsa roja out of that. Um, my personal preference for tomatoes is Roma's. Thick skin, make the best spaghetti sauce, make good, you know, salsa. My sister taught me how to make salsa. And then she called me like two years later. Hey, Joe, how do you make salsa? I'm like, I learned it from you, dummy. Well, that hamburger is good and dead. He's good now. One, you know, Dollar Tree hamburger. We'll see what he thinks. I got some special toppings for these tacos, too. Here they are. We found a smoked salsa made by Cholula. But it was so expensive that when we did our Saturday cook over at my parents' house, we took this and we took what we call her weirdo salsa, the paste, you know, because for us, that's like so sour. But we were like, can we borrow your weirdo salsa just to save money? Because this shit is expensive. And then this is just a little piece uh, of takeout from the Indian. This is almost like two weeks old at this point, but it's still good and it's so hot. We always enjoy it. Not putting this on my daughter's. They're each going to get one of these leftover tacos, and I'm only putting this Indian shit on the boys' ones. Those aren't all our boys, but our other boy that lives here is at work, and he also does his own food. My wife's a bartender. I don't know if this is a bar tool, but I, I am going to use this. It's like a shovel spoon. See the flat end? What the hell? I'm going to use that for the salsa because, again, this was expensive. I can't believe it, but I love smoked stuff, so we'll just use it sparingly. Pico de Gallo is uncooked. That's right, and it's almost salsa to me. <laughs> it just doesn't tend to have that extra kick of peppers that I need. Or cooked? No, Pico de Gallo, I've never seen cooked. I must protest pico i believe is always cold i don't know i could be wrong you know if you go to a real like typical taqueria that's street tacos they give you onion and cilantro anyway and then usually they have a red and a green salsa to choose from yeah i think the pico tomatoes are generally raw you have an interesting way of writing tomatoes
Boys and go! Yo, yo, yo! Hey, Dad! Come get a taco! One of my sons is immediately going to look for a sauce. I'll just tell him it's it's already done. Hmm. Gal pal, if I made you my uh, fresh salsa, you're not going to worry about tomatoes being cooked or uncooked. Trust me. Right, Ella? All right, Ella. I already put sauce on this taco, so you're good. All right, so one of her pick two for the daughter would have been a beef patty, but we already bought these over the weekend. They, they're Jamaican beef patties with a little cheddar. So I'll throw that in the mic. What's up, Aunt? Here's a taco for the young man. There you go, sir. More food to come for you. And a taco for the young lady without the Indian hop. And I'm making you a beef patty right now, so you can come right back. So yeah, I'm just rolling a... Marinara over sauce. I always call my tomato sauce marinara. I don't know. I mean, my grandma, she called it gravy and she taught me how to do it, kind of. It's just like, she would use like the vine tomatoes. Even back in the day before organic was a big deal, they would sell the vine tomatoes. She'd do that, oil. She liked a little bit of jalapeno. Uh, oh, cook it forever, oregano, salt. Uh, and then at the very end, she would add like a little ragu or something. She was kind of funny like that. We made massive amounts of, of pasta on her kitchen tables. Um, we would make a volcano of the proper flour, drop an egg in, throw some salt, roll it up, and then we got, you know, the crank machine, uh, which, which I have up there. I also have a card over here. When she was, it was her 90th birthday, they gave us cards they say everybody writes something about grandma for her 90th birthday and then it comes back to her in a book and then after she died it came to me so i'm looking at it hold on it says at the top my favorite thing about lucy is and then you got to fill it out and so my first you know sort of point was learning how to make pasta on kitchen tables the second one was more or less, hmm, how she didn't judge anybody for what they did. She basically put it on them. That's your problem. Uh, my father and her, they have a phrase, good for you, which means I'm glad you're doing well, or that's your fucking problem. Good for you. And I know I've been disgusted touching my face and so I wash my hands and wipe it off. And I'll still be disgusting, but that'll come. All right. I guess I need to shred some more cheese. That beef patty is cooking pretty quick. It's just the middle, so I stuck down the power to 80, and then I'm doing like 22 seconds. It'll probably be too hot to eat, but I'll let it stand. It's done, it was done at 11. This will be for my daughter, I'll put it aside. It needs to set, it'll be too hot. It's like chosen marinara over sauce. I just wanna know what sauce is then. Um, I know people who like white sauce and stuff like that. I'm not really a big fan, but I'll do garlic butter for them. Though there's a lot of picky people. We, we, we got to do cooking by steps if it's the family. I have to tell my sister all the time, kind of my middle sister, 
um, wait. Like if I do a grill outside at their place, um, the first burgers I have to make for the sissy crowd, you know? So I always, she wants to go get them. And I'm always like, no, 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 you wait. The next one is coming. The next one has mustard, sriracha, onion chunks inside. These kids won't eat that shit, you know? Her kids. So I always tell her like, wait, it'll be worth it. Can't leave out the third man. He made his pick two as well. And one of them is a frozen burrito. Like I said, I deal with those because I eat good and eat decent fresh ones so many times that this would be a treat for me. Diversity is a treat. This is gonna take forever. Cheese and raw onions. That's what we put on their hot dogs the other day. Absolutely. Oh no, we did mustard and raw onions. But yeah, absolutely, that works. Um, I used to be like a no cheese guy on my burger. I used to really want, I don't know, just purity. What is the dress? Dress the burger? Oh, you have a salsa dress? Yeah, people have always bought me like hot pepper accoutrements. They're always like, you like hot peppers? And so that's like one of those uh, holiday things that, you know, people will do. I know you like hot peppers. Here's a hot pepper bowl. Here's a, you know, it's, it's wonderful. People are so cool. A salsa dress. You got green onions on that? I had a hot pepper shirt. It was like one of those like Christmas styles. So it was like strung up hot pepper lights. Whatever. What you got? Now you got more coming, bro. You gotta wait. What were your other pick two choices? That's you. All right, I just got the answer on that. Yes, yeah, scallions. That's interesting. I don't. I don't make my salsa that way, but it's such a treat when I get it. So the other thing they chose these uh, sticks. So gonna have to use the oven for that before my recipe. I don't know another way to cook them. I cook everything at four ten. Vidalia onions are great because they're sweet, yellow, big yellow Spanish onions is what I like sometimes. But hey, a white onion is not useless. It's good on a hot dog. When I was a child and had my first uh, Vidalia, I thought, man, this is sweet enough to just eat by itself. Maybe. What are these? They're pseudo mozzarella sticks and pseudo jala stuffed jalapenos. <laughs> Instead of stuffing the jalapeno, they just put bits in them. These are from the Dollar Tree, you know? Coolin onions? All right, before the cheese that I already shredded sweats, I have to move that a little bit and then I'll lay these out for them. Put them in the oven. They probably take about eight minutes. I'll do a five minute flip them and then do like four minutes. Yeah, and these are good, but you know, they're from the cheap place, you know? So they're probably not the most quality. We just try to get them flipped over and out of there before they blow up because you know mozzarella sticks will blow up mac and cheese balls he loves it man they also have the um sometimes in the freezer you'll find wisconsin cheese curds that are breaded that cheese boy that i have he loves those squeaky wisconsin i don't know what it is gouda or something yeah they blow up doug yeah, I remember being introduced to mozzarella sticks too, but that was in Philadelphia with my uncle. 
and those were gourmet as hell like we don't get that i don't know any place that's got that and that in the city place when i said it might be alessandro's it might actually be delessandro's and i don't even know if it's there my grandfather used to take me there and he didn't eat he drank probably 40 beers a day maybe 50. i never saw him eat shit. and they also didn't drive it was wild up there in the city you know everybody knew him though i mean and they thought he was good looking so good on him yeah so these fake m fake moots sticks and these uh fake stuffed jalapeno things my boys like this crap yeah yeah they're just not really stuffed they have uh, jalapeno chunks inside it's the cheap way but this one totally loves us poppers good point yeah it's like uh when they do the quality of chicken they like uh fried chicken strips they'll call them tender strips or what's the other one um tender strips or i can't remember but there's three levels you know I keep touching my face, which is disgusting because I'm a cook. All right, well, I'm going to use my microwave timer for this. I put them in. Yeah, they're basically nuggets. Yeah, but they there's another level. I don't know. I forget because that stuff's all garbage. All of it. I remember when I was a kid, and I'm trying to like catch up again, but when I was a kid, it would be like, just give me uh, fish sticks and ketchup. I loved ketchup. And my mom was not interested in cooking for us either. And she had a couple of rotating meals, and we didn't know how low she was on money either. But most of them were pretty damn bad. It inspired me. All right, let me shred some more cheese. It'll take a minute. Tender strips. Uh, there's one more level in that line. Not not the nuggets. Mm. Shouldn't have started the conversation. I don't have the information. Where I grew up, they had all the full wings uh but then when i went to san diego with my sister they had the buffalo wings and i was like wow that's something different you're taking garbage food putting some sauce and flavor on it and making it good cook like gordon ramsay okay so scottish english rustica rustic I cook like mom sent you to the arcade with four dollars and said play your games and get your food that's my style that's cool that's cool i worked in a deli um kind of cool you get some meat slicing muscles that are insane i don't make excellent baked goods i have a few specialties but baking is not really my thing i like to, i mean i'm a sauteer i guess The herbs and spices, that's right. My salt and pepper is those. I don't go simple. Yeah, prep, it, it changes everything because we don't waste anything. We have so many people to attend to. It changes everything. Prep is everything, you know, just like in everyday life you know planning ahead is good 15 tiered wedding cake wow like with the bridges and stuff or just that many layers 
because I do like uh, Italian weather, wedding cake. I do like uh, the kind of cakes now that they put like nut oils and stuff in. And man, you know, they're good. I wish I could do it. I can't. Um, I kind of like those tasty cake crimpets. Little thing you get three for a dollar. Well, one of these young fools chose a chicken sandwich. They don't taste like chicken at all. That's all I know, but my daughter wants it. See how we do that. I never got a timer on these cheese sticks and stuff. Cold sugar, cold sugar. Oh, water fountain? Hell yeah. Huh. No, if you're talking about those, like, sheets of fondant, that stuff, oh, I hate it. It's like chewing bubble gum you can't get rid of. It's so oily. But they're like, I can make a cake shaped like anything. So I get the, the gimmick. All right, those sticks are well on their way. I'm going to set a little timer here for about six minutes. Like I said, they should probably take eight, but they're on their way. Then I'm going to turn that oven heat off so I can turn it back on. All right, well, as far as this pseudo chicken sandwich, the bun is soft enough to take off, and I will be heating up the patty. And I'm doing it full power, so I better pay attention. It's probably going to only take 15 seconds. Don't know. I'm not much of a microwave cook, but I try to do whatever's clever for them. All right, so I got a burrito. These are done. Just got to call those children. So I'll be back. sugar. I don't know. I know what candy floss is, and I worked in the carnival. You scoop it up, you know. Uh, those things are just like insulation. They cut you all over. You get little mini micro dots of blood everywhere. It's just glass. It's sugar glass. All right. Her chicken sandwich is almost done. I'm working on it. Give me a second, Ari. Count to 11. That's you. That's you. All right, I'm gonna check on these sticks. So they've been toasted up in the oven. They're getting there. They've got a bit of a texture to them. Probably five minutes, because I turned that heat off. Don't want that damn uh, alarm to go off. What you getting Ari? Which one on that chicken sandwich? There you go. I do a fit. I have to go back. <clears throat> I have to go to back to a doctor, so I'm only drinking three days a week right now. 
You're not supposed to gamify your own health. I get that. But when I go for, you know, new blood work, I always want it to be better. You know, sue me. I also didn't forget this bit. If you are going to get pre-sliced cheese, this company, they make a decent pre-sliced cheese. I'm pretty sure it's maybe Parmesan, um, provolone, and it is pre pre-shredded, but it's much better than like something you would get from Walmart. It holds up to the teeth. Pulled sugar looks good. <laughs> yeah, I guess they do make good cheese. Because for me to take a pre-shredded one and be like, I celebrate that. Yeah, that must be pretty good. Back to the old, you know, reliable shredder. Yeah, that, that mozzarella, fresh mozzarella, that's my wife. Um, hopefully she can get through all those sticks. But she likes to do it on crackers with a little mustard and stuff like that. So I'll shred up some more of this white cheddar. Again, it's not the most beautiful thing for the meal that I'm making. The meal that I'm making should have more color. Anato. There are different variations on, on this as well. I'm just gonna do one version. Maybe mention a few others. Yes, they make good cheese. I believe you. My wife and I, this Christmas, we bought for each other because we were getting nostalgic about these bad fruitcakes. Just nostalgia. We got a postcard with it that says, we've been making these for 110 years. That's probably better than the food. You know? I'll show you. I got her a book for Christmas. Um, and she put, or I put it in there so she could use it later as like a bookmarker. I'm going to wash my hands. I'll show you that book. Wash my hands first. Also, check the heat over here. I don't want to burn these things. Yep. Okay, here it is, Doug. Just as predicted, the first one popped. That means these sticks got to go. First one pops, they got to go. That's how I used to do my boiled eggs, but I have a much better strategy now. Perfect timing is what I do now. All right, let me give these to uh, the little brother over there. I'll be back. They're down at the other end. They don't bother me. I don't bother them. But they, they have their own agency, you know? Uh, they went out there. They got to shop this stuff for themselves. They get to make their own decisions. Um, we have, like, levels of trips that they do on foot. Because we're all on foot. But... Just so they have their own agency, we push it as far as you can. Antonello.
Well, all right. I washed my hands on the way back, so we're all good. Who is the sheriff? Who is the sheriff around these parts? I was looking for a big enough bag to dump these cheese in. That ain't that big. We'll see. WHAA? Hmm. Sounds like a housing association or a credit consortium of some sort. All right, let's see if I can get this cheese in here. I'm definitely going to have to wash my hands after that. Grease like a motherfucker. Roy. <laughs> Roy, New Mexico. What's up, Roy? Nice to see you, of course. Yeah, I didn't want to touch these cheeses that much. I didn't want to get that intimate, but I had to put them in a small bag and my fingers are greasy. Hi, Roy. I'm just cooking some shit. I don't know your friend, Roy, but I know that he is your friend, and that's all that matters to me. Wash my hands. Get this out, out, out. Now, where was I? Am I going to burn the house down? Oh, yeah, I wanted to show you my wife's book. The other Roy, not New Mexico. <laughs> Oh, man. That's cool, man. I love it when people know each other and can just hang out. It's cool. Even if it hurts, Gal Pal. So, as I mentioned, this is the book I got my wife for Christmas, The Wawa Way, because she's kind of in the business. But, uh, like I said, the whole us wanting those stupid fruitcakes, at least we got this card that's like, we've been in the business forever, we make the best, whatever we think of them, doesn't really matter. I will totally check out your channel. I guess what, what I'll do is I'll go back when I end this, go to your name, go to your channel and do all that. I just can't do it right now, man. I'm sweating. My hands are dirty. You know, I just wash them. Just whatever. I'll be there. I know. I can't click it, but I'll be there. Speaking of my wife being like in the business, um, I'm quite interested too. So I got myself a book for, for Christmas. I haven't cracked it yet. It's this one, Well Done by Dave Thomas. Because this one, Dave's Way, is an absolute Bible to me. This man had no basic formal education. He learned everything by observation. But he's spot on on everything he came up with on the way to run a business he is spot on and his history was fantastic so i look forward to this this has been a bible of mine So the kids said that I fed them to their, uh, yeah, it's the Wendy's guy. Yeah, I, I worked at Wendy's. Yeah. Wendy's is fantastic, you know. Prep, again, Doug, and having a good system, you know. Wendy's was like, look, man, if you can't hack it, we'll put you on fries. If you can't do fries, we'll put you outside because that's it. Yeah, I mean, 
Having a system is very important. And that was the Dave Co. system. Entrepreneurs, that's right. Um, you guys probably don't know what his connection was with the Colonel in KFC. You probably don't know how screwed they you know, got him so that he couldn't just go out and do his own enterprise. They were paying him a decent salary to do nothing and shut up. And he sued them. And he won. And he learned it all by observation. He was an adopted child. And he basically looked at everything like, what would my grandmother think of this? The adoptive grandmother, but the important figure in his life. What would she think? Again, look it up. All right, it's time to re preheat that oven. You know a little about his story? Yeah. No, I mean, it's great. You know, the, the KFC kernel thing, you know, with using the pressure cookers, it was them taking the process of making fried chicken from like a 10 hour process to a four hour process. Come here, my little boy. Maybe. I don't know how people talk in those days. And a lot of people, like, again, he didn't do well in school. That wasn't his way to learn. A lot of people, he was adopted. A lot of people didn't care about him, but his grandmother was there. That's why whatever he has with children, I think it's his own children, his nieces, nephews, the people he's adopted. He took them all in, you know? I appreciate that. The more the merrier in my life. It's, it's, it's always hot in here, but... I'm reheating the oven. I'm going to go into the uh, the dip. I'm making a dip. One that um, we take to parties. Everybody's cool with. I prefer to use a Triscuit. But now we don't dip. We make little sandwiches. But it's definitely a cracker, bean dip, cheese dip thing. You don't have to like it. It's just information. I need some more of that. What are you up to tonight, Roy? Repreheat. Yeah, Roy, um, I know I probably, you probably didn't hear this. We have a very sensitive fire alarm here. It'll go off when people make toast. So I got to repreheat, turn it off. I got to, I, I call it like a, sort of like Russian governmental housing. There's a problem, but you just need to know what it is. So there's too many... Too many watts, too much amperage, who knows? You know, I'm not an electrician, but this circuit is bad. There's a lot of things, if I try to plug them in here, they just trigger themselves off. And my oven's stuck on that circuit, so I gotta be careful. Grazie, poops. Everybody enjoy it? They don't do it. All of our neighbors know because <laughs> they have the same problem, man. Every time I smell like some nice spaghetti and sausage here that's coming from somebody else's house. One time it was my house. I was using the fucking slow cooker making chili and I didn't even think about it. And I'm like, somebody's making some good sauce. Alert the sheriff. They're so lazy around here. I don't think they'd come. All right, so this is going to be one of those 1970s type things, you know, the, the return of the casserole kind of thing. But we're making a bean dip. Um, Doug doesn't like soft cheeses. And, well, uh, we're kind of fucked from the beginning, Doug, because 
I, I, you know, this was clean, but I shredded the cheese in it, so now it's cheesy. But we got to start with this enemy right here. This is what's going on the bottom. Cream cheese. Yeah, the chirping is different. The chirping is like, get up, get yourself a 9-volt battery, or learn how to kill the switch. But uh, this kind of, what it'll do is you make toast, and it'll go, deet, deet, deet. scare everybody. Um, the hours that I may keep, because I basically keep 22, it might really bother somebody. But it's off real quick, you know. I have this noise over here because I have the hood on. But, you know, it's probably full of birds, you know, the air duct, to be totally honest. Because across the street, we got birds everywhere in the ducts. I see them walk in to, like, the dryer holes and stuff across the street. Man, it's, it's hard to uh, shut those things up if you don't change the battery. Yeah, we talked about it, but it always bears repeating. And, you know, I try to also make these things stay up so that somebody can watch them on their own time. I mean, I don't want to dictate anybody's time. I didn't see anybody streaming live, and it was pretty boring yesterday, too. So I'm not stepping on anybody's toes as far as I know. Anyways, this will take, like I said, I think this is a 9 below 11. It's going to take one and a half. It's getting late. Not here. Not here, and you know. If I call somebody, it'd be somebody in, like, Riverside, California, you know? So, they're three hours behind me. Anyway, I like to use a nice flat spoon to measure that out. So, it's a pack and a half of cream cheese, essentially. Got to make it to a nice, even level on the bottom. That's the deal. Thankfully, you don't have to do any sort of prep of the pan. I know we're on the same, I know we're on the same time, but... You know, again, like if I call somebody, it's late for Ozzy because Ozzy is, I believe, a dog or an animal. I mean, do they even know time? Anyway, you got to spread all this crap evenly. And I would generally use just any flat spoon. But I'm going to find that nice shovel again. Where is that? Maybe I can't. Oh, sure, let me try it with a plastic one as if it isn't just going to break. The guy in her pick. Oh, a dog. I guess. I mean, is that a, a husky or a Malamute or I don't know much because I've never had land and I don't believe in having animals without land and I don't believe in ownership anyway because I'm weird. I got a tarantula for three days. My wife had a cat that we rescued. The cat was eyeing up the tarantula. I had to take the tarantula back. What I would prefer to do is not have a cat, get two tarantulas that are females, put them in the same cage, and keep the one that killed the other. That's what I would rather do. But I don't have that luxury. So I'm just spreading cream cheese out I believe that too, Doug. I believe that too. Um, but I come from a place of, this isn't even my game. This isn't my passion. So I'm just doing it a little bit. I want to be respectful as I can. And if somebody thinks it's more important, then good on them. Let them do it. I'm just having fun hanging out with you guys. I hope you can hear me. What I'm saying is, and I heard Gal Pal say, I'm on YouTube to make friends. So I'm just having fun hanging out with you guys. I wouldn't dare show up here with nothing of value. Like hopefully some piece of information will mean something. But it's still not my passion. Hanging out with you guys is cool. That I like. 
Sorry, I'm focused on it. Yeah, you want to get them as uh, even and clean as possible. And I didn't because I'm, I'm going to rush it because I'm talking. I can't never stop talking. And it's so much better that somebody's listening or maybe listening. Because usually I would just talk to myself. They don't care. And it's not like my, my wife cares, but she's not here. And she can't because these children don't know how to watch each other. All right, so we're totally repreheated again. <laughs> I'm going to put it up to 410, though, for real. Let's see. Did I miss anything? Damn it, I did miss something. I'll see you later. Sure, sure. Please feel free. I, it's not about you. It's just me. I, I don't want to step on people's toes. Especially because, again, if it's important to them, it's more important than it is to me. Does that make any sense? All right, so this is a bean dip. I got the cream cheese on the bottom, spread it out. I got the wrong color cheese to put on the top. And then in the middle, hey, squirmy, wormy, what's up? Got to put some beans. The cool thing about this is usually I would tell you the fucking four or seven spices you need, but you don't. When you make this dip, you just go to the shelf and get a chili bean. If you get a canned bean that's not a, a flavored bean, you got to wash the shit out of it to get all that goo off of it. This one has an easy pull tab, but I'm not going to use that because I will tell you what I suggest. I suggest that you open your cans sideways. Like this. If you open them sideways, it doesn't cut the can. It just opens that glue seal. And then you have no sharp edges. So then your trash bag doesn't get cut. It's really that simple. You eat begging strips. Oh, man. You're a crazy man. Scormy, put some wine in it. I've eaten um, dog biscuits, but they got worse over time. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. I, I use that can opener sideways. All it does is break the seal, so there's no sharp edges. You don't cut your damn bag. Good enough for me. Bean on cream cheese. Easy to see. Now, when you initially put this in the oven, I just put the timer 18, 19 minutes, but it's definitely going to take more. And you'd probably prefer to broil it at the end because you want to bubble the cheese on the top. Again, in aesthetics, you're not even going to see that this time because I got freaking white cheese. But at least it's real cheese and good cheese. About to eat a bag of... But yeah, yeah. Try it with a, a pink Moscato. You got to throw like a weird... Uh, I, I like these with the wine. You know, you got to make an accompaniment. So I went cheap on the cheese, as I said, even though I had to shred more. That's our top. I'm disgusting. I licked my fingers, but now I'm going to wash it and be less disgusting. All right, so now we got the cream cheese layer, the bean layer, and the white cheese layer. On top, um, what we usually use is a green El Yucateca sauce. It's a very garlicky, garlicky habanero sauce. One normal option for anybody else is get some sriracha and just uh, do it in the diagonals, you know? Or like Cholula, right? But I'm not going to do that either. Instead, we got a small can of roasted serranos. So they look like this. They do have the stem on them. Here, they look like this. They're roasted. They have roasty pockets. They're also brined and preserved. But they do have like the little stem cap. And I'll probably throw those away. And I'm going to shred these straight up by finger. But they're going all over the top. So I'm basically kind of making a green sauce in my own hands with these serranos. 
and that's going on the top. That's my topping. You might like pepperoni. I mean, and, and that's what I'm saying. There's a thousand ways you can make this, really. Begging strips, I ate one. It tastes like a nightmare soy burger. There is so much soy in it. It's so salty. Uh, it's obviously not meat, but dogs don't know. That's what they say. I would say they probably fucking do know. Because dogs are kind of like four-year-old humans, aren't they? I don't know. Seems like a fair comparison. I don't really do dogs. I met P-dubs, though. And, uh, uh, don't start saying you have to pet her or else she won't shut up. So I did. I told him I don't really do dogs, but I did. And then she got all, I brought them like, uh, cloth bags because I saw them walking around with paper bags trying to carry gallons of water and that ain't good. So I met P-Dubs and I don't even do dogs, but he's like, that's sort of standard when somebody comes up. If you pet her, she'll stop barking. I did, you know, um, and I fell for her. And I, like I said, I gave him those cloth bags. And they were in, they were from our house, smelling like our house, somewhere near the incense. And she snuggled up and fell right asleep. Just that smell, you know, it was beautiful. I was touched. Let's put it that way. Not touched in the brain, but in the heart. Not this time. All right, now that I chunked up those peppers and washed my hands, I'm gonna run the garbage disposal. Sorry. Oh. He said, out. Out with the dirt. Yup, so this dude is ready for the oven. And I don't know, maybe I don't even like it sometimes, but if you bring it to a party, they love it. My favorite way to eat that is with Triscuits. And we used to dip. But not anymore. Now we make little sandwiches. You can use any cracker, but I make Triscuit sandwiches. That's my favorite. As long as I have a four more teeth. I got a great doctor, but even he said, your dental insurance ain't shit. So, as long as I have four teeth to eat a Triscuit, I'll do it. Man, we outlive our teeth anyway. We need a third set all of a sudden. Come on. Even dogs are starting to get a thumb where they got that little nail that pokes out over there. Come on, man. Evolution is too slow. All right, so I got it in there. I got it at a full 410. I'm not even going to turn it down. So now I'll set a timer. 18 minutes. It won't be done. But I need to check on it. Good Lord Almighty. Thank you, Senate Squirmy Wormy. And you know what? I'm trying to catch your show, too. What time are you going to do it? What time are you going to do it? Because I'm trying to cook something else here, but it's not necessary. I could probably just end up in your chat room. I tried to go to the noon live, and I, I unplugged my router and, and restarted it because your video was not loading. I don't know why. That short I put up last night had over a 1,000 views. They were probably all from India. So when I woke up this morning, I had all these Indian pages showing up. And like India cool, whatever, it's just like, it has nothing to do with me. So I had to go through YouTube like half the day saying, don't recommend this channel. Don't recommend this channel. Just, it's a bunch of Indian ladies. I don't know if they're single and looking. I, I don't know. I'm not interested in that shit. I've been married for 20 years, been with her for 23. Uh, not interested in that shit. Thank you, Senator, though. You know, I drop likes on yours. I try to comment. Um, and I try to answer comments if they come through here. Or even text. And I know I missed some. Roy. I got you in mind. I'll catch up. Squirmy's channel. Squirmy's channel is awesome. <sighs> Cheers, peeps. <clears throat> if you do it, do it. If you don't, don't. You know, sometimes the benefit of having a shorter pipe is it's closer to your brain.
I'm going to turn this oven off for a second. Don't need to push it. Yeah, we have this hood over the oven. It's supposed to be soaking shit up, but I'm telling you, it's probably full of birds. That's what it's like across the street, just because I can see them. For the four people watching. That's right. Isn't that good enough? Don't nobody need to be watching, so we're all sharing time. We're all showing appreciation just by being there. And, and you know, thank you. Goodbye, my friend. Just talking to myself, not any people. Yeah, for the four people watching, good for them. While I got that dip going, I'm going to make some hamburgers. There's my shovel spoon. That'll do. Alright, so I'm preheating a pan over here because I'm going to do some hamburgers. It's the pan that they got their, their uh, tacos out of today. But that's what I like to do, like utilize it while it's hot. Then I'll clean it all to hell when it's not. Bring out your dumb... I hate dealing with the greasiness of burger, but I will put it in a plastic thing. That way, if I can't scrub it off, I'll just throw this fucking thing away. I'll tell you that. I don't like the grease. I'm trying to get like three big ass meatballs full of hamburger. I'll probably make four burgers out of it. Drop that in. Just a big ass palm full, a big ass meatball, times three. Although I think I'll get four burgers because I'm gonna do them pretty thin. They're good that way. In general, I start with my uh, diced onion, but I'm gonna make this a simple story. So I got burgers in there. Um, like I said, usually I would start with some diced onion, but I'm going to do it simple and just use powdered seasoning. Absolutely, Doug. Go do them. Go do them. Thank you for stepping. Thank you for stopping in. I really appreciate it a lot. Nobody needs to watch, so don't worry. Good to see you, Doug. Peace. One day I have to ask you about something, Doug. When you can explain. When you're on camera. All right, so it looks like I'm throwing uh, cumin. Cumin is my first spice here for my burger. They're going to be different. 
You can't do it without salt. And don't listen to people saying, you know, don't put the salt in until after. Put it in. It's not going to sit here for 20 minutes. I'm about to smash them and burn them. That's taco season. And then garlic powder and I'll be done. No, I won't be done. I'm totally lying. Garlic powder. Got to throw some mustard. And then I'll throw something red. Garlic powder. Good. I don't like burgers without garlic. Okay. I really think that damn fire alarm might go off. Still making the dip. It takes time. Be back. Mustard in this. A half dollar with a hollow center. Then I will use the drippiest, loosest barbecue sauce in the world, the open pit, because I only want like two huge drops. That's all. No big deal. This is three huge meatballs or four burgers. But last time I made burgers, there was no sweetness. And so I need two huge drops of this to throw that sugar in there. Oven off again, monitoring. All right, smash, smash, smash these burgers. I mean, this mix. Then I'm gonna make those burgers. Those will be cool, they only take six minutes or whatever. You know how to make burgers, make them your way. This isn't even important. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all the support, the comments, the likes I see. So nice. I really appreciate it. All right, I'm breaking them up. One. Nope, it's going to be three big burgers. I thought I was near four, but I'm near three big. I only put a tiny bit of salt on them, so I can still put that on top when I flip them over. The important thing about your burgers is make them a consistent thickness so that it all cooks at the same time. A lot of people like to put a divot in the middle. It makes a lot of sense. It collects the grease and everything else. Uh, but I would just advise you, make sure each has a uniform thickness to itself and also relates to its neighbors so they can cook in essentially the same time although it's almost always that you have to rotate the pan around because one side will inevitably be hotter than the other side just so you know it's a tip just the tip All right, I got to run the garbage disposal. I'm coming. Thank you, Doug. You know. See you soon. And again, if you guys tell me where the next chat spot is at, I'll be there. All right. Burgers are just starting. It's going to take some time. Got to clean these hands. Whew. Clean them. Get that sweat off my face. Welcome to New York.
I guess I'm heading into squirmage because if nobody answers me, um, he says he's going. So if he goes live, I'll be there. I'll just click my live tab, and if things work, been having a pretty bad internet day, but if things work, I'll be there. All right, I'm going to check on my oven. My casserole, my dip. See? Whatever, it's... it's ah. Yeah, it's not done. It's looking sexy, but... I'm going to broil for four minutes. I don't, we'll see what that fucking thing does. Broil for four minutes. Put a crust on that bubble cheese on the top. So you got some texture. You'll see. These burgers are cooking a little slow. That's cool. They're very thin. I made them thin. Okay. Smell says, turn it off. Off, off, off. Even the exhaust that comes up from the uh, oven will hit these burners and make it kind of bad, kind of dangerous. So everything off for a second. Not dangerous, but it will trigger the alarm. It's a false fire alarm, but it's, it's annoying. God. Back in business, back in business, heat back up. Man, things have been going on recently. Um, well, everybody's talking about this Cat Williams thing. I mean, he's not even for me, so that doesn't mean much. Um, and I tried to watch it, but the Shay Shay, whatever it's called. He got he looks like an ex football player. I don't know who that dude is. Anyway, Cat starts Cat Williams starts with so many lies and things. It's just like, how do you even believe the rest? So I tried to get through it all. And there's a Willie D live that is a new interview with Cat. I'll probably watch that. But anyways, that's the big topic outside. You walk outside, people are talking about that. I mean, I could have told you comedians aren't funny a thousand times. You know, because generally they aren't because a lot of these people, this cheap trick, they just say, it's like, kind of like, um, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, you know, but that isn't a joke, right? So, like, let's say, like, the early, the first Dave Chappelle special, I'm not talking about Netflix, I'm talking about the, the theme and that one, the way back in the old day, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, that's not fun. So, something like that could have a punchline, or like, weed, you know, but weed is not a punchline, it's like, a joke is something like, what you doing in the what you doing in the garden, grandma? Looking for weed. That's a joke, you know what I'm saying? Whatever. So a lot of these motherfuckers aren't fun. Uh Bernie Mac very famously on uh Def Jam, you know, back in the day, he came up there and he says, I ain't scared of you motherfuckers. He did that whole like wiping his lip thing and all that. So but I guess now it would be, Y'all motherfuckers ain't funny. Cause that's kind of what it is. It's like it's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's cheap. Everybody wants to throw stereotypes around. Get a cheap laugh. I mean, come on, man. What's the deal with airline peanuts? Get the fuck out of here. Alright. I'm going to finish these burgers. Peace to everybody. I wish I had a song to play us out, but I don't. Because I got the movie behind me. See ya.